The Human Resource Committee meeting to order. It is June 15th, 2020, um, noting that all board members are here. Um, I need approval of the agenda. I so move to approve the agenda. Second. Thank you. Um, any public comments? Randy, Brian? No, I, didn't see, I did not see any. Okay. So the first agenda item is redefining the literacy coaches as instructional coaches. And Brian, I'll hand it off to you. And I will hand it off to Amy. Uh, she, okay. uh, Amy Johnson um, is here to kind of speak to what they're thinking about and some of the discussions that have gone on with our elementary principals. Uh, Amy, all yours. Thanks. Um, so I'll just provide a little bit of background um, just to make sure that all the board members are aware of the position that I'm referring to um, when I say literacy coach. So um, the literacy coach provides job embedded professional development. Um, they work directly with teachers and our professional learning community teams. They work with individuals in coaching cycles, um, and those would be kind of four to eight week cycles where a teacher would set a goal, um, they take some data, they'd um, do some interventions with the coach, um, some demonstration teaching or co-teaching, um, implementing new strategies, and then they conduct um, some post data. So coaching cycles are a big part of their job. Um, they also offer workshops um, before and after the school day for points. Um, they help with staff meetings, PLCs, lead book studies, that sort of thing. So I just wanted to make sure that um, people knew that which position I was talking about. So we started with the literacy coaching model um, in 2013-14, and that was a result of a needs assessment um, that the ELA department did um, that showed there was a greater desire for um, professional development. So we start with uh, we started with halftime coaches in that year, 13-14, uh, and then we grew that to full time in K six, and then eventually full time in seven twelve. So um, early on, they did a lot of work with literacy. We had adopted some new curricula, so they were really helping with that. Um, but as the program has grown and as the years have gone on in these last seven years, they have gradually evolved to be more of an instructional coach. Um, so they're less focused on curriculum implementation um, or subject specific work, and they're being sought out more as an instructional resource. Um, so they've had cycles or they've offered professional development on things like effective feedback, questioning techniques, peer discourse, student engagement, visible learning, growth mindset. These are things that are more instructional moves, not content specific pieces. Excuse me, is this instructional to the student or to the teacher? To the teacher. Um, so they still do support ELA topics, of course, but they have um, staff members from all departments reach out to them. Um, so this year at the high school, the coach conducted a book study with the math department and the science department. They have CTE reach out to them, related arts. Um, so it's, it's really evolved um, in the seven years that we've had it. So we do have a coaching vacancy at Heritage. Um, that we are going to post. And so because of that position and just because of how their work has changed, I approached um, Randy and Brian about posting it as an instructional coach rather than a literacy coach. Um, instructional coach is really the term that is used throughout Dane County. Um, I think we would be able to attract experienced candidates um, if we um, posted it as an instructional coach. At that same time, I would also just retitle our current coaches. Um, I've talked to the coaches about this and they feel like that represents kind of the work that they're doing. And I also talked with all of the principals and they really support the change too. So um, Randy and Brian suggested that I bring it to you um, to see if you had any concerns or questions before we um, would post it. Does the change in title have anything to do does it change pay scale or anything just change in title okay a job description change 
it, it wouldn't it wouldn't change uh, their employee definition uh, or their employee group or any benefits associated with it. Okay. If it if it is more um, reflective of their job, I think you know you seem to be having a good handle on that, Amy, and I support doing that. Yes, I do too. I, I think yeah, one I of the things well. Amy, that, that you reflected to me was by changing the title, it may also bring some additional teachers forward who may seek them out for assistance. Whereas when they have the strict literacy title, if you're looking for some strategies in math, social studies, other areas, um, they may not necessarily see them as the resource to go to, or if it has a broader title, it can serve as potentially more staff. Yeah, that seems to make sense. Yeah, I also see the clarity in terms of attracting um, staff from other areas if they're using a different title than we are. I think we need to work with that. Do the coaches need any more training to be such a broad coach than literacy, or it's the same? So much of our training for them has been on um, instructional coaching. They haven't had a lot of specific training. Not the content so much as just yep. instruction. Yep. Okay. All right. I guess one of the questions I had is, I mean, we certainly wanted to bring this back to an entity of the board just to make sure that we weren't um, kind of getting offline here and you had a question as the next posting went forward or that came forward to the board. Do you foresee, I mean, we'd like to kind of move ahead with this posting as soon as possible with the instructional coach title to it. Do you see that this needs to be something that we forward on to the full board for consideration? Just an FYI to them when we do the hiring piece that it came through here for discussion, or do you feel that there's a, there's not a need for that? Just looking for a little clarity and process to make sure we stay congruent with the expectations of the board. Mm -hmm. I feel if there's not a financial change, it's just a clear, it's just a clarification of their job duties and it's, it's going to make it uh, across the board where other districts as well now understand what the, <laughs> what those positions do. Yeah. You know, I, again, being new, I would say it, it wouldn't really have to go to the full board, but again, Joan. <laughs> I I've got the background. Up. Yeah, I don't, no. I don't see a big need to take it to the full board because it's really just semantics of titles. And I think, you know, if we need to hire one, it's better to get in front of the hiring curve than to wait for a board approval on just a title. Right. I agree. So what we can yeah. do is we'll get it posted as an instructional coach. And then what we will do is when we bring that higher forward, we'll clarify it at that time. Perfect. Great. Awesome. Great. Thank you very Thank much you. for your support on that. Thank Thanks, you so Amy. much. Um, Brian said I could step out now, so I will. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Have a good day. It. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the next item is review of the employee guidelines, uh, some new language that Brian put together for us. So. You want to walk us through that, Brian? Sure. Um, I'm just going to quick. I'll quick share my screen. Um, I, this is a the attach. It's in the attachments to um, to to board book. Is what I'm pulling up here. Oh. Okay. And so um, we're again, uh, Rebecca. I did this. Uh, I'll pat myself on the back. I, this is my first set of attachments to board book, and I thought <laughs> I was doing really well and. Until Rebecca said, well, actually, Brian, we put everything in the extras tab. And then I <laughs> didn't feel as good about myself. But she said it's really small, so let's just leave it there. And so uh, I guess if you want to give me some feedback, uh, I will make sure that I will put things wherever you want them best place for your for your comfort. Um, everybody's uh, got my, my screen up now. And so uh, this was related to the feedback we got at the last meeting about the, uh, the, the this sentence here, the note that the terms of employee handbook cannot contravene terms of an individual employment contract. And so um, combination of, of going back and looking at see what's exists, uh, what exists in a, in, and perhaps see if we can fold it into what's already there um, and, and just strike that. And so it was in, uh, it was in four uh, handbooks and so in this employee, this one admin assistant, and um, 
struck that, and then what would make the most sense was to just uh, replace it with this paragraph that, that it makes it congruent with um, the classified staff and with the custodial maintenance staff. Um, and so this is, uh, again, makes the language match up between those three handbooks, takes out the sentence that was, it actually probably is a better fit anyways. Um, it talks, you know, it's not a contract, it's, it's an um, employee agreement. <laughs> Um, the second handbook that it found or that it was found in was the teacher handbook. So again, struck that sentence and really the only thing that isn't defined um, in terms of a compensation package is a teacher's salary when they come in. And I just underlined uh, that in our existing teacher handbook language, um, it already speaks to defining and determining the initial salary offering upon hire. So that, with that language there, um, there is, is no need for that sentence. Um, and again, this, just to point out, this, this has a date from a prior handbook. Obviously the date's gonna be updated um, as the handbooks roll. Uh, the third, employee handbook that it was found in was the admin support handbook. And this, uh, this both admin support and admin, it has the, the same uh, language in it in this regard. And so uh, by striking initial salary placement and instead placing initial compensation plan, uh, put that, that term in, um, that would then really permit uh, or identify that there are certain things that we will discuss on an individual basis. And, and really what this comes down to, what we kind of spoke about at the board was um, it comes down to some of what, what I would call the, the fringe benefits of the position, vacation days, sick days. Um, and so this would, you know, if we, which are all part of the compensation plan. It would strike that sentence. The, the days are then, you know, the placement is then allowed or permitted here and, and we kind of allow that flexibility. Brian, um, I personally really like that phrase compensation plan. Would it be more appropriate to use that consistently in the teacher one as well, where you underlined initial salary should that also say initial compensation plan so you have the flexibility to it, it seems like it would make it all more consistent i i think it would certainly fit there um and, and that again would it, it would uh it, it would permit some of that flexibility for sure yeah kind of a wider range of offering additional sick days or whatever they might want to address in their hiring okay Um, and then just a sh I'll just kind of show you, if I go further in the handout, uh, the administrator, same sentence struck, and then uh, the formatting went a little wonky on this. Obviously, that will improve once the once all the language is, is okayed and we recalibrate everything. But then again, just struck that same term and added that. So all the, the handbooks then would, would have that sentence gone that was, was troublesome and, and reflect the new language. Okay. I agree with Joan. I think that clears up some things and at least open up the door for um, negotiations on several variables. So. And, and makes it consistent. I like that. Right. Okay. I like what you did with that, Brian. Anybody have any other concerns about that language? Perfect. Um, and we had one last topic, administrator guidelines for changing to 210 days. Yep, and so that's, a, again, another attachment within there, and I pulled that up on my screen to, to show you. Um, right now in the, employee, in, the, in the administrator guidelines, there is a 210-day contract is not identified. 
And so as, as Randy and I reviewed um, what that would mean, there was really only several things that came up um, that, that aren't already identified. And one of them I, I left in, uh, and I did notice the, the asterisk, is that um, there are 210 day contracts in the admin support group. And so when possible, uh, I, I, this is uh, following that same pattern between the two admin and admin support. But there, there is, I think, one question that I would like some feedback on, and that relates to our first uh, subject, which is the individual life insurance. Um, administrators, uh, all employees, all employees, um, the district takes out a term life insurance policy for them for their annual salary or annual wages rounded to the near, nearest thousand. Thousand excuse me, thousand. Um, administrators uh, are provided and administrative support staff that have, that were hired prior to 97 are provided uh, an additional uh, um, stipend to get more life insurance coverage for themselves. Um, uh, for uh, a 238 day contract, that's $500. For a 261-day contract, it's $550. And then uh, in both um, the admin support and admin uh, handbooks, it says if you work less than a 238-day, you get $250. Um, as I mentioned, this only applies to admin support staff from prior to 97. After that time, anyone hired after that time, which is essentially almost all of them, they, they get just the district, you know, gives you our term policy, no stipend. Um, my question is, do you want me to follow that pattern of $250, lump all contracts left in $238, 238 days less, uh, anything less than 238 days, it's $250, or do you want me to kind of loosely follow um, a ratio of what that would be um, in terms of a stipend for a 210-day contract, which if I did a ratio of if 238-day contracts get $500, a 210-day contract would, would get a, a, about $440. Um, in that if I followed a ratio or if I kept the language universal between the two handbooks, it would stay at 250. Brian, I think I lost something. Is this $250 to buy additional yes. life insurance? Yep. That if the person doesn't buy additional life insurance, they don't access the 250. Uh, no, actually, Joan, they're, they're, it just paid out as a stipend for, oh. for them to do so. Whether they buy it or not. Correct. We, we don't circle back to check to see if they purchased it or not. So at this point, anybody hired before 97 would have an expectation of this. And so is this changing what their expectation is? This would, wouldn't actually change. Uh, I just pointed out that the admin, this is in... Uh, admin support, okay. but the admin support uh, folks are nurses, social workers, et cetera. Yeah. If they've been hired after 1997, they don't get paid this anymore. Okay. Um, our administrators have, have continued to get this and still do to this day. Um, so right now, for example, um, Katie and Mike, who are both working 200 day contracts as they're, they're less than 238 days, they get $250. Um, and so as I was just making sure that, you know, that I guess the question I have is, do we want to leave it as a blanket 200 less than 238 days gets $250 or do we want to make a ratio that would be a little bit closer to what the other administrators get um, for 
238 day contracts and 261 day contracts. Why did you pick the 250, Brian? Does uh, it that that was in there already? I didn't. That that's historical. And so that's what they get if they work 200 days. Yep. And now if they work 210 days, they they're not going to get any more. Correct. But if they work over two, if the, if they work 238, what do they get? 500? 500. Huh. And a 261 gets 550. So your big question is, Brian, as you're kind of looking at some consistency here and as you're trying to kind of clean up some of this language, you're seeing that anything less than the 238 is just a set dollar amount, $250 per year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your question is whether you mm -hmm. want to shift it from just a straight allocation of 250 or if you want to do some proration on a percentage basis based off of what a full-time administrator of 261 would get. Yes, it, just uh, I guess to see what, what your, uh, the committee's suggestions are in terms of do I leave all contracts less than 238 the same or do I recognize that, you know, a 210 day contract is working more than a 200 and so there could be a difference there. Uh, that's the, I guess my, probably. Are we, what are, what are we going to be seeing in terms of, are we going to be thinking about extending contracts from 200 to 210, a lot of them? It, it actually is all, uh, Brian, it's going to apply to one person that we have now, Katie, uh, at Her Prairie is going to go from a 200, uh, she's the an, an, uh, associate principal at Prairie. She'll go from 200 to 210, yep. and then we'll be posting uh, for uh, a new heritage AP that will also be a 210 day contract. So there, there actually will only be two administrators on 210 day contracts. And the difference, if we took a percentage, was what's the difference from those 10 days? About $200, uh, in terms of this, for this benefit, about $200 a piece. Yeah. I mean, I'm in, I'm personally, I'm in favor of doing some type of, uh, a percentage of their work time based on a, uh, um, I guess, you know, this, I, I'm not sure what amount you would go from, but I would just, you know, if they work more, they should be covered a little bit more. Um, the 10 days is not that great of an amount, but um, yeah, I'm in favor of some type of percentage increase. I can go either way. It seems, you know, I guess I would look for your recommendation actually. If you, right. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. It seems I didn't even realize you guys had this benefit. So I learned something this morning. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think any benefit you can get from working tw two more weeks is a good deal. You should do that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I think it would be, um, the, the one reason I, I kind of like the idea is that it does recognize we're asking more of them, um, yeah. but it also, um, it does differentiate, it is, again, with my ultimate goal of folding together um, handbooks to, within similar groups. Um, I like the idea of differentiating, in this case, between an administrator and an admin support uh, contract just because they are, they're a different level of responsibility. Um, and the logical question that an admin support person might ask is, my contract length is the same as that administrator's contract length. You know, why is there a, you know, why are we, you know, why are we lumped together in this regard and not others? And I would say you're, you know, if we have all administrators getting this kind of same uh, benefit, it would be, you know, my answer would be, you know, it is an administrator benefit. And so it's uniform within that group. Um, more than it's about the day of a contract, it's about the, your employee classification. And, yeah, and that makes sense. So, Brian, with that philosophy, would it be better just to treat all of the administrators with the same stipend instead of differentiating even between the 238 and the 261? Well, and I guess I would say um, 
uh, I don't know the answer to that, Joe. This is a really historical amount. Um, yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you, I, I, I mean, it goes back to my day, like, my starting day existed at that time, and I don't know how much prior to that it existed. So it, it would go back at least 16 or 17 years and probably longer than that. Um, yeah, I think as you kind of fold the books together, if, you, if it seems that you would have less justification mm -hmm. to just set a, a lump sum for administrators compared sure. to support staff, I would support you doing that. And I know you review and look at these books every year, Brian, but yeah. you know, it just, it, it isn't a huge amount of dollars anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have to do a lot of justification to differentiate, if it's based on days, it seems like you will always have to do that justification. Sure. If it's based on title, then we should just pay out the same amount based on title. Yeah. That, that, but, I I think that it makes sense, and, and certainly um, this this group, our committee, uh, will be involved in a lot of that work um, in terms of folding together uh, handbooks. In mo in many regards, there's a really great alignment, and I think it'll work smoothly. And then some will have some things to discuss. Um, and I've got a note to myself to have this be one of those items to look at. Sure. Uh, and. Uh, I would envision us kind of doing that work um, earlier than 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 late spring, um, just to have most of those things in place um, well in advance. So is this a does this go to the full board? I'm assuming um, it's this, this would, uh, and this would be another. This would be an adjustment that uh, would go in for the second reading and second and final reading, and okay. at. Uh, on the July meeting, the July 13th meeting, I believe, I think that's the right date. Um, we would be looking for a, uh, uh, a motion from the HR committee to adopt the employee guidelines. Um, Cause we, we go uh, one reading just for viewing and second reading take action on. And um, so this would be uh, the July 2nd one to take action on would be a, a motion to to approve the guidelines, further discussion, I guess, second further discussion would come at that time, so. So for this particular year, um, you're, you're thinking of doing kind of a prorated amount for the 210 day? Yeah, yes. Okay, and then in the future, maybe look at doing it by title? Yes. Yeah, I support that. Okay, good. So. So Brian, if you if this comes to the full board, then because you know that cost is going to be going to come up from mm -hmm. or from some people, sure. um, is, is there a way to put together two or three scenarios? Sure. I, I know it's not a lot of money, but I know somebody's going to ask, um, yeah. what's it going to cost us? So is this this it, particular one would would the the difference would be a a total of four hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm just. I, yep. I know it's just I just you know people are going to ask so yep. if you come if you come up with the the two or three different scenarios we just discussed yep you know have a dollar amount <laughs> absolutely and I will have it at the ready <laughs> thank you so do you want a motion from us Brian today to approve these potential changes to what we saw in the first reading um, you yes. know I I would say I think that would make sense because uh, I think. Um, the, they had asked it to come back to committee. Sure. Yeah. So I would need a motion from the committee to approve what we have seen the changes. Motion to uh, to uh, approve the changes uh, set forth for today. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So um, that that would be. Um, that would be would be it for what I was looking to get the group together on today. Um, the um, the the uh, all the edits that you that I worked through with you will be um, put into the next board book, in the folded into the actual handbooks, 
Um, and I'll work with Amy to identify them in a different manner um, than, than the other changes. Um, but we'll be, uh, as I said, pulling those up and reviewing them at the July, uh, offic the official July meeting. Sounds good. Sounds great. Great. Thank you, Brian. So um, we're ready to adjourn then. Brian, you're all set. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Sorry. All, all in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aye. everyone. Yep. Bye. Have Bye. A good day. Thank you. Proceed up. We're done.